Hello, I am Laurent Ferrier and I will present you how we created a video which reproduces an issue on the RTMS onboard system. It has been reported as a change request. Let's first start with the video which illustrates the issue. The problem arises when two targets are too close to each other. In this case, you see the first target and the second target. The first target is pre-indicated 7 seconds before switching to target speed monitoring. Let's wait for pre-indication. Here we go. Pre-indication is done. And we switch into target speed monitoring. The first target will be reached, but when the target is reached, there is not enough time to pre-indicate the second target, and this is the issue. I shall show you how we produce this video using ERTMS formal specs. ERTMS formal specs is used to model the requirements of subset 26, 27 and 34. They've been encoded in the tool to allow complete traceability. We created a set of tests according to the issue. I have selected one of the test scenarios we created for the issue, which is graphically represented on the right side. The two first elements are used to initialize the train. The description is provided in the More Info window. After that, the next entry is allowed to set up the train position, nominal distance, mode, level, and movement authority. This allows us to skip the start of mission sequence. The last element provides a static speed profile. It is necessary to be able to reproduce the issue with the two successive targets. There is a structured representation which represents the information in a clearer way, matching its structure value. The first entry indicates that, initially, the speed is restricted to 200 km per hour. The first speed restriction is located 2 km further and restricts the speed to 160 km per hour. The next restriction um, the next restriction is located at 800 meters after that and restric restricts the speed to 90 km per hour. Last, the so-called speed, speed restriction releases the speed limit to 200 km per hour. The next part of the scenario defines location where we would like to check the train status. We also provide a speed depending on the train permitted speed. The first location is before pre-indication. The next location is where the pre-indication should occur. The next step is located where the train is in target speed monitoring. The next point of interest is when reaching the first target. The second target should be revealed and so on and so forth. We shall check 
if the train behaves as expected is using the GMI additional tool. The GMI displays the system status as it would be displayed to the driver. Let's select the scenario to execute. and execute the scenario step by step. Initially we see the train in standby mode and we can see that after the fourth step the level is level 1 and the system is in full sup. There is also a default movement authority specified in the scenario. When uh, SSP is provided, the DMI display is updated according to these new values. Setting the train in the first interesting spot, we can see that it is effectively before the pre indication location. The next location indicates that the train is in pre-indication monitoring. At this point, the train is in target speed monitoring. If required, we can navigate in the test execution backward and forward. Now that we see that the scenario is OK, let's animate it. We perform dynamic animation using uh, the Scenario Editor additional tool. The Scenario Editor provides another representation of the scenario. Distances are located on the x-axis and the actions applied on the train are represented by those icons. The scenario editor can be used to simulate the train movement. And that's it. We reproduce the dynamic behavior of the train before pre indication and then we go to pre indication. There. We are now in target speed monitoring. The first target is reached, but the second target is not pre-indicated. That's it. Thank you for your attention.